Welcome everyone. Let's begin our lesson for today by going over our learning goals and success criteria. First, what are we learning? We're learning how to solve multi-step equations for a variable. How are we learning it? Through the multi-step equations notes and the multi-step equations assignment. When can we use this information? To determine how long it might take for you to save up enough money to buy a car. How do we know we learned it? By getting a score of four on the multi-step equations assignment. Now let's take a look at our agenda for today. We'll begin by going over our learning goals and success criteria. While we do that, you'll fill out your Get It Started. Once you've completed your Get It Started, we'll go over it together and answer any questions that you may have. After that, we'll do our weekly raffle. Then we'll go over the multi-step equations notes. And then I'll give you time to complete the multi-step equations assignment. Once you've completed the assignment, we'll go over it together and answer any questions that you may have. At the end of class, we'll go back over our learning goals and success criteria while you fill out your before you go. Your only homework is to complete any incomplete assignments that you may have. Let's take a look now at the multi-step equations notes. Our notes begin with the learning goals and success criteria. Now what are variable equations? A variable is a symbol used to represent an unknown quantity. In this case, it is the x. It's the unknown. It's some letter, usually. A constant is, no, is a known fixed quantity that is independent of the variable. So it's a value that we do know. For instance, 2 would be a constant. And a coefficient is a scale factor. It's what we're multiplying the variable by. The equation represents the entire thing. So it represents the entire relationship between the two quantities. So in this case, the variable is x. The constant, in this case, is blue. That's the 2 and the 4. The coefficient is 3. And the equation is the entire thing. So we're saying that everything on this side is equal to everything on this side. Now, how do we solve variable equations? The goal is to get the letter or the variable by itself. So we need to get everything away from the variable. And the way we do that is we're going to move everything, the constants and the coefficients, to the other side of the equal sign. So all the numbers go to one side, and the variable stays by itself. Notice that when we do this, whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other side. So if we subtract 2 from the left, we have to subtract 2 from the right as well. So here's an example. 4x minus 3 is equal to 9. Now, our rule is we need to get x by itself, and we need to get the 4 and the 3 away from the x. Now, where do we begin? We could get rid of the 4 or the 3. Now, the easiest solution is always to get rid of whatever's furthest away from the x first. So, in this case, we can see that we have a 4 and a 3. Those are the two that we need to get rid of. And we're going to pick from those two and say, which one's furthest away? Well, the 4 is attached to the x. So, we're, the 4 is really close. The, the 3 over here is kind of floating. So, we're going to get rid of that one first. So we'll go ahead and add 3 to both sides. And we're left with 4x by itself. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. So that's really 4x plus 0, which is just 4x. And we have 9 plus 3 is 12. So we're left with 4x is equal to 12. Now we get rid of the next variable. So we just keep doing this. Whatever's the next furthest away, we just keep doing that process until we get x by itself. Well, the only number that's left is the 4, so we're going to get rid of that one next. So we have 4 times x is equal to 12, so we're going to undo multiplication by dividing. So we divide both sides by 4, and we get x by itself is equal to 12 divided by 4 is 3. So in this case, we get x equals 3. Let's look at another example. We have x over 4 minus 3 is equal to 9. So we're going to do the same thing. First thing is, we need to get x by itself. So we need to get rid of the 3 and the 4. And we're going to start by getting rid of whatever's furthest away. So in this case, the 4 is kind of attached to the x. The 3 is out here floating. So we're going to get rid of that first. 
So we're going to add 3 to both sides to get rid of this minus 3. And we get x over 4 is equal to 9 plus 3 is 12. Now we get rid of whatever's next furthest away, which in this case, the only thing that's left is the 4. And the 4 is dividing from x, so we undo that by multiplying. So we'll multiply both sides by 4, and we get divided by 4 and times 4 cancels out, so we got x by itself is equal to 12 times 4, which is 48. Now there's a video here for you to watch that shows you how you can check your work on multi-step equations using Symbol Lab. Let's take a look now at how we can check our work using Symbol Lab for multi-step equations. So we go to symbollab.com and we go into this bar here and we can go ahead and put our equation. So let's say we had an equation x over 4 minus 3 is equal to 12. So that was our equation. We wrote it in here and we're going to go ahead and click go. And it'll give us our answer here, but it'll also show us step by step how to do this. So it tells us first we should add 3 to both sides. And we end up with x over 4 is equal to 15. It says now multiply both sides by 4. So we multiply both sides by 4 and we get x equals 60. So it shows us step by step and we can make this as complicated as we want to. This could be x minus 5 up here. Now we click go. It'll still tell us how to do it. So it'll say add 3 to both sides. Multiply both sides by 4, and then add 5 to both sides, and we get 65. So we can use Symbol Lab to help us check our work when dealing with multi-step equations. Let's talk now about how to access your assignments on IXL using SB Link. So what you'll do is you'll click on the link that takes you to your SB Link, which should look like this. And you're going to log in the same way you would log into your computer. So the first part for your username is going to be the first part of your email address without the at sbcusd.ca.us. So it should be your last name, first initial, middle initial, and then the last four of your student ID. Then for your password, it's the same password you use to log into your Chromebook. From there, you'll go ahead and click sign in. And it should take you to a page that looks kind of like this. You're going to go find the link that says IXL, which is right here. And I'm going to go ahead and click on that link. And it should take me to the IXL login page. So it should look like this. At the top right corner, it should say welcome and then your name. If it does not say your name, then you're not logged in and you won't receive credit for your work. As long as this is good, you can go ahead and close that tab out. And then you can go to your Google Classroom. And then you'll go and find the activity, which is here. And I'm going to click on the IXL link right here. And this will take me to the assignment that I need to complete. So that's how you log in to your assignments on IXL using SB Link. Let's take a look now at the multi-step equations assignment. If you notice, our assignment begins with our learning goals and success criteria. If we scroll down, there's a link here that'll take you to SB Link. This is where you'll log in to be able to access our IXL assignment. Once you do that, you'll return here and click on this link that'll take us to our IXL assignment. So when you do that, it should take you to a page that looks like this. And you're going to go ahead and solve these multi-step equations. So the first one says 2t plus 2 is equal to 10. So we're going to get rid of whatever is furthest away from the t first. So we're going to subtract 2 to get rid of this positive 2. So we subtract 2 and we get 10 minus 2 is 8. So we know that 2t is equal to 8. The 2 is multiplying by t, so we undo it by dividing. So we divide both sides by 2 and we get t by itself is equal to 8 divided by 2, which is 4. So I'm going to go ahead and hit submit. It tells me that I got it right, my SMART score went up, and it gives me another question. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to get rid of whatever's furthest away from the Y in this case first. So I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides, and I get 6 minus 4 is 2. So I'm left with 2Y is equal to 2. 
Well, the 2 is multiplying by y, so I'm going to undo it by dividing. So I get 2 divided by 2, which is 1. I'm going to go ahead and hit submit. It tells me I got it right. And notice my SMART score continues to go up. So I'll continue to answer questions until I get a SMART score of 80. 80 is what the score you need to get a 4 on this assignment. As you go through it, if you make a mistake and miss a question, your SMART score will come down a little bit. That's okay. Just keep working until you get your SMART score back up. Once you're done with this, you'll go back to your Google form and click Next. This will take you to your Before You Go. Go ahead and complete the Before You Go and then submit your work on Google Classroom.